Hi, this is Peter at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today we're going to go back to working a little bit on our scene. So I'm going to open up Unity and I'm going to import a new package. So I'm going to go to my Unity folder and under standard packages I'm going to include the where is it? Tree Creator, right there. So it's going to import all these new goodies for us. And it looks like they're all going to be put in standard assets. So I'll just import those. I'll pause the video while they import. Now they've changed it a lot since the last time I used it. I put up a video, uh, I can't remember if it was during beta 2 or beta 3, but somewhere around there. Uh, they've changed it quite a bit, but adding a tree is still the same. You come up to Game Object, Create Other, uh, you pick Tree, that's going to put one in your scene, and also you're going to get a prefab for it. So right away I'm just going to call this Test Tree. Now I'm not sure if it's just something on my system that's set up, but while I'm creating the tree it tends to lag quite a bit. So I'm not going to go through and actually sit down and try to really find detail uh, what a tree would look like, but I'm going to go through all the different options with you. So if you select your tree, you'll notice it over here in the inspector, you have this little hierarchy. You can open and close all these things if you'd like. Uh, it has your mesh renderer. You know you can cast and receive shadows. It's going to have materials, uh, your mesh filter. Uh, let's just go to the hierarchy and take a look here. You'll notice right away that it has 88 vertices already just for this stock and 140 triangles. It's only using one material. Uh, so let's just jump in. So if we go ahead and grab this little branch thing here, you'll notice this little eye for the node count. Well, there we go, show hide group. You can actually click that on and off. And when you start getting multiple branches and you just want to work with one, it can be handy to turn the rest off and you can't see them anymore. Then of course, just click the eye, show them again. You also have your node count. I'm just going to go ahead and jump down here. Uh, when you want to add leaves to a node, you can just click your leaf button or add more branches. So right off the bat, I'm just going to click some branches to add to the group, and it adds them up here. So let's, actually I'm going to take that back just by hitting Control Z. And I want to go into the tree properties. So right off the bat, if we're clicking on the first one here, our first node, we'll just go through them. Distribution. I'll, I'll leave you to read all the little descriptions here. Now your group seed is just kind of the, the random number that it's going to generate it on. Let me move this over a bit so it's a little more in scene. And as you notice, as I move it around, you know, it, it changes according to its randomness. Our frequency. It's just kind of like how many? <laughs> so if we click off of our tree, it's kind of cool, I guess. You could have some sort of thicket, especially if later on you make them all gnarled and twisted together. But I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, let's see what have we got here. Uh, distribution. You can just play with these. Alternating will make the branches come out, you know, one here, then the next side, then over here, then the next side, and so on. Actually, I believe the odd one always goes to the top, but it's just something you can play with. Opposite. Oh, sorry, alternating was one would be here, then the next one would be up a little higher, and then the next one would be on the other side, up a little higher. Uh, the opposite is the one where it goes out to the sides evenly. And world I believe is how it's pronounced uh, puts them all kind of like in a ring at around a spot so we can do it like that now a lot of these times my slider just doesn't work for me there we go I got to work in that time uh, like I said I'm not sure if it's something on my end maybe I just have to reboot my system I'm not sure if anyone else is having the problem uh, just leave a comment down below. Maybe we should send a bug report in. So growth scale, you'll notice it just... Uh, can't really tell. 
it just makes things a little bit bigger. I guess it'll make a little more sense once we start having more branches. And you'll also notice these little graphs over here. You can actually click these and manually edit them. And they're just Bezier curves, so you can do pretty much whatever you want with them. And there's a few common uh, ones that are set up. So I'm just going to get my original back. There we go. And growth angle just changes the angle it grows at. So if we open up geometry, you have a level of detail multi multiplier. And if you read through, it just says that you can make some trees uh, have a higher level of detail than others. Uh, geometry mode. So you can have branches only, branches and fronds or fronds only. Uh, fronds, think of palm trees, those things hanging off, that's a frond. Now branch material, uh, if you incorporate the tree uh, asset package, you'll be given three. You'll have the big tree bark, big tree branch, and big tree leaves. I'm just going to click big tree bark, and you'll notice I, it has to load it and import again. So it actually takes quite a while to generate a tree, but it is nice because you can make tons of random trees out of the exact same materials. So your forest can actually really look quite varied. And if I click off, you'll notice the material has been applied. So we'll click back on. And if you set it to like branches and fronds, I'm going to get the spinny ball again. <laughs> So here we go, we're going to import assets. I can now add fronds. And for, if I want breaking, I can just increase the break chance. And if I go back under geometry, now I can select a material for breaks. But I just want branches for now. Okay, shape. Okay, you can set the length and you might not have noticed these dual ended sliders before. If you click in the middle, you can slide the whole thing. But if you click on an end, you can sort of adjust the range. So you can have the top end a little higher, the low end a little lower, and you set like a fairly wide range. Or you can put it pretty tight for the range. Uh, relative length. Yeah. Almost everything has a hover over now. And you might want to adjust the radius a bit, make it a bit fatter. Uh, cap smoothing. I haven't actually used that. I'm not sure. I don't think it was in the last version I used. But it probably helps when you have uh, like a tree stump. You pretty easily make a tree stump with these. Crinkliness. Just twists up your tree. Uh, sun seek makes it grow towards the sun. Noise you can add just uh, like gnarl it. The, the bark. Uh, what else do we have? Noise U and V. So we can really start warping it around. And then you can start adding flare radius so you can make it fatter or skinnier. And you can set the height that you want your flare to be at. And the noise for the flare. So breaking. Break chance. It's pretty much just a percentage, as it states right here, zero means there won't be any broken branches, and 1.0 means all your branches are broken. Anything in between will just be a percentage of your branches broken. And again, you get the double-ended slider where you can adjust the range. Now fronds, if you're using fronds, uh, here's where you can adjust those. It's pretty much the exact same thing. So we'll close fronds. And animation, uh, if you create a wind zone, and we'll get into wind zones a little later on, you can have you can control the way the tree acts like blown around but I'm not actually going to get into wind, wind zones yet I want to read up a little bit more on those before I start but yeah you can adjust the main wind basically how much it bends and blows around in the wind but I'm gonna go ahead and make you know just a basic tree so I'm gonna add some more branches so I click the button and I wait while my system goes out to all my USB devices, spins around, then re-imports my assets. So I've added a branch. I'm going to come down to distribution. I'm going to make it world. 
I'm going to attempt to increase the frequency. I find it very hard at times. There we go. I got it to move once. Come on, baby. There we are. It's six that time. I have a quite a bit of difficulty with it. Again, it just might be my system right now. I add some twirl to it, so as you can see, it spins around. Uh, the steepness. So I'm ending up with a very gnarled-looking tree. Uh, what else are we gonna do to it? Grow scale. I don't want them to be too long. I want them to be fairly short. And the angles. Uh, I want them up a little bit. Actually, I want them up quite a bit. Now I can go in and do some more uh, playing with the shapes. I am going to add the branches. At least the branch material. And I'm just going to show you how to add leaves. Actually, one thing before I do that, uh, you notice how when you click your tree, you have all these squares and a couple circles. If you click one, for instance, I'm going to click the circle. You can come down here and you can click either move, root, rotate, or freehand. So if you click to move, you can actually move the branch around on here. Same thing with rotate. You can take it and you can rotate it actually around on here. And this goes for any of the little squares or circles so you can really bend your tree up the way you want and well, we'll just leave it like that and you'll notice that it will tell you down here that uh, the group has been edited certain options might not be available anymore and if you click the convert to procedural group all hand editing will be lost so when I click it it goes back to being straight again and you'll notice up here it has a node count of four because I have no uh, four branches coming off. And then also, for some reason, I cl can't click freehand right now. But when you have the freehand, let me see if I can get it. 